Hello, everybody, and welcome back to PGL Tavern Tales here in Romania, Bucharest at DreamHack. Romania, actually. DreamHack Bucharest. Yeah. My name is Nimshin. I'm here with Lothar and RDU. So those two guys from G2 joining me again. And uh, what a pleasure that is, because you guys have really nice synergy. It was uh, a pleasure listening to you before. And now you're, nice not, to hear that. you're not going to cast the G2 <laughs> match. No. Will you handle that? Oh, that's easy peasy when you have good players, right? Yeah. We have JJ and Howie, both very high profile players. And JJ is, I would say it's, it is on fire, but Howie with his Druid is even more on fire. He's 9 0 currently. So if we finish 12 0. Uh, his Druid is banned. Serious. Oh. He's really banned. They were talking so. about it before the game. JJ was like making fun of Hoy that he cannot play his druid. Damn! Now it's <laughs> oh free for JJ. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we will, we will see. We'll definitely see. But uh, just to give everybody a spectrum where we are in the tournament right now, let's look at the bracket. So, Super JJ versus Hoy is the match in the upper bracket. Then Tessin versus Stan Sivka is going to be the second match that we're going to see today, and uh, the winner is going to the. How do you call it? Is the winner bracket final? Winner bracket final. And who right? wins the winner bracket final will have a one advantage. series advantage yeah. in the grand final, and that's yeah. like huge. So it is actually huge. Yes. But they still yeah. have to win. <laughs> like so, so Super J versus Hoi first, and Tessin versus Sensivka, then they play against each other again, and the winner has that huge advantage that we've mentioned. Yeah, and the loser of Super J and Hoi plays against Life Coach, while the loser of Tessin and Sansivka plays against Crane, which will be tomorrow. Yeah, and we have already Orange and Sixo eliminated from the tournament, and Crane and Life Coach, they can only, well, if they lose right now, they are, they are done. And those guys right now, if they, if they want to win, definitely, because they want to, ha to have that huge advantage, but uh, if they lose, they are still in the tournament. They still have a chance. Yeah, yeah. it just keeps getting harder and harder, because let's, uh, let's say like the guys that are currently in the, in the bracket of the losers, they need to win five more matches to actually win the tournament. That's actually a lot, right? Yeah. But we have bans, so let's talk about that. Yeah. So ban Druid for um, for Hoy, right? Hoy will not be able to free out with Druid, but he got the Warrior. And uh, what is the, the Warrior that he's playing? Is it Dragon Warrior or is it some control version with portals? I think we didn't see actually the Warrior yet for Hoy, because it was always banned. This is why he was able to play the Druid. I believe he's playing a mistaken. control version, if I remember correctly, because I was looking at the decklist when Hoi was playing versus Orange, and uh, I think his warrior got banned uh, right there, um, and it, it was a control one, but I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Uh, Hoi likes to play Cthulhu Warrior usually. Um, interesting to me is like JJ did not pick the Druid; he opted to pick Warlock as a first pick. So like maybe he expected Hoi to pick the Warrior or the Shaman. But on the other hand, war Warrior should be good versus um, versus Warlock, especially if this is a Contra version. Uh, I, I think maybe maybe JJ expected Hoi to pick the Shaman, since the Shaman was still open for Hoi. Okay, okay. And, uh, and then maybe then he wanted to like, pick Zoo to, like, ba to be, like, beat the Shaman, and then like uh, Hoi won like the mind games. I mean, it's not super important, like the one, one, only one of the decks, because it's like zero standing still. But uh, I think that uh, JJ has like really good matchups with his Zoo, if he manages to get rid of the Warrior. How is Rogue against Warrior? It's pretty good, right? Rogue against Warrior? Yeah. I mean, it depends. Like, if he, if they have any tech choices. Um, JJ's Rogue has is the Zot Rogue version, right? How is? I have no clue. We didn't I see I it. I think he is playing a standard Leroy Gadget Sun. Okay. Well, it's a standard. It's like I would say it's slightly favoring Rogue, but it's still not like you know. It, everything can happen in this matchup, especially uh, if the Warrior g uh, gets to be super aggressive, right? So yeah. who do you guys think has an edge overall? So are you saying if um, if JJ deals with the Warrior, he is favored overall because of the Warlock? I think he's like super close. One of the closest ones that we saw until now. I, they both have like Warrior and Rogue, and uh, one of them has Warlock, one of them has Hunter. But uh, Hoi's Warrior is like a bit better versus JJ than JJ's Warrior is against Hoi because JJ is playing the Dragon Warrior, while Hoi is probably playing Katoon Warrior. And like Katoon covers uh, Zoo and uh, the Warrior matchup better. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. I think Hoi has, like, a slight edge, but uh, he's going to be super, super close. What happened with Priest? Lothar, why no Priest here at all? Like, it's not even banned, it's not even picked. I mean, when you've considered the matchups here, I don't blame him for not picking pri Priest, right? Uh, against yeah. JJ, the on it would only make sense against the Zoo, and it's still a matchup that can be lost. It's yeah. not like an outer win. So I don't blame Hoi for not picking uh, for not picking the Priest. In other matchups, like I have seen, it made more sense, especially against Life Code, when Sansico yeah, yeah, was playing, yeah. like... Lineup-wise, it makes perf perfect sense when you can win two matches. Like two matches, is an insane, in insane advantage in the uh, hero standing, which is best of five. Uh, but here, it, I think it will be detrimental to the lineup to just pick priest because you know it's at the counter. It's not a deck that wins on uh, on its own. 
And that's an amazing thing about this format that every almost every match we see different decks and different strategies applied by those players. Um, the games are almost ready. The Mulligans, we're going to see Warrior versus mm -hmm. Warrior this time. And we see that there's an Iron Forge portal, which tells us that there's most likely Katun version. Well, it doesn't have to be Katun no, version. It can be like a Normal control as well. Yeah, Nizov for like. Uh, oh, you think Nizov will be playable? I mean, playable. It's always playable, but is it favor favorite in this format? Okay, never mind. Okay, it's in <laughs> Um I, I don't know. I think like usually you want Dragon Warrior because like when they let your Warrior open, they will probably have like Hunter and like Dragon Warrior has like a really good chance against Hunter if they can find the Fiery War Axe and the Nzov first mate, while Nzov just like straight up loses to Hunters. Mm -hmm. But uh, if your opponent doesn't have Hunter, which is like JJ situation, maybe this uh, Nzov Warrior can do magic. Definitely will be fun to see it. So guys, have it, uh, take it away and have fun casting. Thank, Thank you, Nimish. Uh, I try to remember if the hunter was banned in the second f uh, in the second wave. Um, I think so, because that makes sense then, right? Because uh, uh, no, the warrior was first pick. That's interesting. Hmm. We'll have to see it well, again. Doesn't yeah. matter now. Yeah. Like, let's focus on the games. Exactly. So turn two, some bluffing from Howie here. This doesn't work, by the way. Like, if you if your card is not playable, even if you like uh, touch it and try to like make it like as you would play it, it's. I it can. Matter. I can argue with you because in the same exact room, I bluffed Gara when I didn't. I played Control Warrior and didn't have a play until six, and I won the game against a Shaman who had a curve. No, but what I'm saying is like, uh, if your card is not playable, when you like, uh, even if you move the card in your hand, it only appears to your opponent as you just like touch the card. Yeah, yeah, but that's it, it doesn't that's go up. Bluff. It, it yeah, only yeah. like gets g gets red. Yeah, but that's when you actually like l move it a little bit. That's what what that's what counts. And what could he bluff? Like Fiery War Axe? Yeah. He would always play it. You yeah. always play Fire well, you know, it's you a cheap, it's a cheap right? bluff. It's a cheap yes. bluff. <laughs> <laughs> I can agree about that. Uh, do you fairy orders to protect the fairy dragon, or do you play the frothing and uh, buff it to four four? What do you think? Uh, I actually think that the fairy dragon, even on one HP, might be very valuable here in this matchup because there's the only uh, the only other way to deal with it will be another ghoul, right, or revenge, mm. and yes. getting the add revenge out very early on, I think, is actually great. Yeah. Just, uh, and if he plays good, you have the fire, the second uh, swing of the fire war axe. So yeah, it's really good. I I agree. I think uh, fire war axe should like hit the board here. Mm -hmm. And you just play the slow game. Can you afford to play the slow game against Nzov? I guess you have to. I mean, forced the into it. Fairy Dragon is actually an insanely uh, fine slow play. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's it's stacking the damage so fast. Yeah. Like the only good way that uh, another warrior can remove fairy dragon is fire war axe, and that's mm -hmm. not in Hoi Sand. Yep. Well, he has another option, which is the Infested Torrent, but it's like delayed by one turn, it's so it's killed. still damaged. Yes, but you have the 2-2, two -two, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, not really, because uh, there, there can be a coin with Black and Corruptor, and yeah, I yeah. think actually that's the play here. Uh, but if you, if you would like to stay on curve with just 4 mana, then it would be a problem to deal with the 2-2, two -two, right? Yes, I mean, if he had, like, let's say, Twilight Guardian, he could also like play Twilight Guardian mm -hmm. and just uh, mm -hmm. leave it up. Yes. But uh, he doesn't have Twilight Guardian, and he has Corruptor, and uh, GG is going for the high-pressure play. And this is, when you think about it now, this is really stacking up. Look at that. He can't deal with either of those. The Bash helps us to, helps to set up a Revenge, but it could have been probably al already played to just to kill that minion yeah, to yeah. get it off the board, right? Because you don't have, you don't even have any armor in your hand to help you survive the situation apart from the bash. So this seems like a really dire situation for, for Hoi. Yeah, it's super awkward. Like in one way you wanna like wait until turn seven with the bro and play like Sylvanas on six and then Brawl on seven mm -hmm. to like get the board back, mm -hmm. but you'll do gonna take way too much damage. That's the thing about Dragon Warrior. A lot of people say, Oh yeah, control warrior beats it, X beats it, Y beats it but then you just play and Dragon Warrior curves out and if you don't have the exact answer, which is probably worse most of the time if you're like all playing Warrior yourself, then you're just gonna lose most of the time. Yep, because that's um, the way the aggro decks are built, right? You, you are more consistent, you have, yeah, yeah. you have more cards that can be played on turn two and achieve the same thing, while the control decks have, are like really specific no. and the, the card that you need at that point, if you don't have it, then you practically lose a lot of value on board and health in, pr in the process. And usually control decks have like answers from like the turn four or five upwards, and they have really big troubles dealing with the early game. Mm -hmm. Most of the decks, mm -hmm. like um, what the wor the control Zof Warrior has for it is uh, the comeback mechanism of revenge, which JJ will probably play around if he has the option to. I really like the Corcoran here, by the way, because like he thinks that maybe Hoy has a brawl, and if he if Hoy has a brawl, it's way better to play Corcoran than to play Azure Drake. You want to save Azure Drake for like later. And uh, yeah, because usually you play the minion that ha that doesn't have the charge first, right? Because you want to ha yeah, get, yeah. get the 
um, the value from both. Yeah, yeah, but against control warrior is like mm -hmm. totally different. Mm -hmm. It's fear war is too late to the party. Like four turns too late. <laughs> uh, the obvious thing is to play the Sylvanas to be on curve and have an uh, option with the Brawl next turn, but... You can die. That's 12 damage. <laughs> 12. It's so a lot of damage. What are the options that you, uh, that can be killing you next turn? Uh, a second Corcoran. No wow. Oh, my. That's ballsy, but it's probably the correct play. Yeah, probably is. I mean, in this situation, I'm guessing that uh, JJ will just smash face and pass. Hero power pass. Yeah, I don't see anything maybe, else. Maybe as a Drake. Maybe as a Drake because you still have Onyxia in your hand and other, uh, in the other dragon, the Draconic Crusher. Yeah, actually uh, I like as a Drake though. So you can draw no. into something that can be useful in the upcoming turn. Maybe you can draw Blood Wiker and play Blood Wiker and kill the Sylvanas. So you can but then you lose the damage. I would like to see him to smash face. You lose the damage, but you get a better board for the Brawl. And if your opponent Brawls, which is forced to Brawl next turn, then you can like... Uh, Refuel the board, but, but yeah, that's if he draws Brad Wiker, anyways. Like, it's probably not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. Zodric. You deal eight that if you trade if you if he goes for the Blood Wiker, let's say, okay, you trade with the uh, you'd smash face for eight and then you trade with the Corcoran. Uh, sorry, you trade with the F uh, Fury Dragon because you the Blood Wiker is actually too damage. Oh, wow, yeah, I, I don't mind this line either. I think it's okay, it's fine. Kinda bullsy. No, no, it's not really bossy. Like you want to deal with Sylvanas because if you don't deal with them, then you give your bo the board to your opponent, and then it's like very hard to like come back on board with this kind of deck. While if you kill the Sylvanas, your opponent cannot even brawl, and n n now he can go howl, which gives him like a weapon for the further for the future turns. But he doesn't have like any way to arm or gain other than brawl. Mm, other than bash. sustain his hand. Yeah, after the Gorhal hits, JJ will probably just uh, play the Draconic Crusher and. Uh, Try to win as soon as possible because that's his visible game plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, but yeah, but I, I don't know if I like uh, if I like that turn of the Sylvanas. I mean, it turned out great for him, uh, but still, kind of weird. I it was know. a very difficult decision. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you don't really want to leave Sylvanas up. Yes, you deal more damage to your opponent's face, but then you donate him the board. And if he has like any way of like uh, armoring up uh, with like shield block with like. Uh, the Iron Forge portal, mm -hmm. then you, know, you just lose the game because you have like no way to like push the rest of the damage that is necessary. Okay, okay, can see that happening. So it was like a super close turn there, what? and uh, now it's like super close between Gorhal and like a Bash Fire Warx climber up. Yeah, I, to be honest, I like the Bash and Fire Warx more because uh, usually the Gorhal, uh, I mean the Gorhal will be an overkill for the minions, and you will use the execute. Oh, actually, you need to um, activate it for execute, so you need Crash in the hand. Okay, that's the answer. Yeah, yeah. So now JJ will probably... Will he Draconid? Or will he Curator? Curator fits better in the curve, but... Yeah, it fits better. It uh, also has Taunt, so it um, acts as a just a, another Guardian for the Fear Dragon. Look at that Fear Dragon, actually. How many turns of attack? Yeah, it's the real MVP. He played on turn one or two, and then he, it hit every single turn to the face. Uh, on two, because it, would, it got Gould on curve. Right? Okay. So he played it on two, and that means that it hit on three, four, five, six, seven, five times to the face, 15 damage. Oh, God damn it. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. And what did, uh, what was the reason to keep it alive? Because you not didn't play on curve, and you played three war eggs on turn yeah, three yeah. instead of fronting Berserker so and trade. That decision that looked pretty close mm -hmm. ended up mattering a lot. Like he yeah. got like 12 more damage, and the exactly. frothing would probably not be able to net it that much. Yeah. And would be able to kill, would be able to die way easier. Sorry. Mm hmm. Could have been killed by an execute. Yeah. yeah. Which fairy dragon can't? No. Um, so. He's considering the mega greedy play of Gromash, but I'm not sure if. It's probably too greedy. Is that greedy? I mean, you have a big threat and. <sighs> You're at HP. You have low health, like super low health. You die to like second Corcoran, you die to Gromash if he plays it, and you die to Alexstrasza's champion. I mean, you still can't kill the Fiery Dragon. <laughs> you die to Fiery War Axe. <laughs> okay, you, you can kill it if you just bash and execute, but... Uh, Show Slam. Does it? Mm. Okay. I'm not sure about that. I think it's fine. Like, if you execute, you still have to tank the Fiery Dragon, and then you're gonna have no armor, and your Show Slam is not gonna be that useful. But if you do it like this, you have no execute activator. Yeah, so exactly. Bo so both ways, I think, are just uh, bad, and you need to like rely on drawing something. But uh, there's a bigger chance you draw something like uh, revenge that like 
uh, helps you proc the execute than like uh, another shield uh, giver to like proc your shield slam. And the fair dragon dealt a lot of free damage. That's 18 <laughs> damage from for two mana. And not only that, it required one hit from Gorhal. Oh yeah, right. If you add in that value and the ravaging ghoul. Like, if we, like, make a total math calculation, that Fairy Dragon was, like, MVP. insane. Oh my god, a steady shot. It's Mark. Oh, that was a snap pick. <laughs> <laughs> do you play the Azir Drake in, like, hero power, or do you just, like, drop the Dragon in and, like, force him to have it? I like the hero power. Uh, usually, in almost every time I play something that has this hero power, I like to just use it every single turn to put the pressure and card advantage, and have the card advantage, without overextending. Especially when your opponent seems like to be struggling with single targets or two targets and that gives you information that most likely he has brawl. I I really like uh think JJ did like a super good play. At first I was like, why would he play into Brawl here when he can play Draconid? But that's exactly what he wants. He wants to play into Brawl because he wants to play Onyxia next turn. Mm -hmm. Right? It makes sense. Okay. Yeah that makes sense as He's well. Like, but then you bro still me bro me bro and then I will just Onyxia you. Mm -hmm. But you you're missing the activators uh, activations from uh hero power. So an example in this turn I would rather have uh, the Twilight Guardian and Hero Power than, or even uh, Azure Drag. No, Azure Drag is actually worse uh, against the Gorhal. So I would probably favor the Twilight Guardian and Hero Power instead of the Monkey right now. But then he wouldn't brawl, and then he could not play Onyxia next turn. But and then do you, you play need Onyxia? But you don't yeah, need Onyxia need because you have like multiple Fress in your hand anyway. Yeah, but next turn, what would you play? Like if you play Draconin, he's gonna bro get a better brawl than he gets now. I think this is like best play. I think JJ like played the. Uh, enough into Brawl to force Hoy to play it and to not be afraid of it. He doesn't even mind that, f that Finley died, uh, that uh, his board died, sorry. Because he has Onyxia now. It's all in JJ's plan. Well, let's see. And Hoy was forced to play into it because like, if he doesn't Brawl, you lose the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I really like it, the way it panned out. Now Hoy needs Revenge, right? He's only out. Yes. Or, or Ravaging Ghoul. Or Ravaging Ghoul and Revenge. So three outs, out of. Can uh, we know how many cards he has in the deck? I'm prob I'm saying like I'm guessing 16, 15. Okay. But that's my wild guess. Okay. I might so be it's wrong. Like around 20 percent. Let's say that. Hmm. The thing is that if you play Onyxia, what can go wrong? Like you know that he might not have a revenge or ravaging goal, but even if he has that, you just continue having the power to the initiative. Sorry, not the power. Mm -hmm. And you can play Draconid. You can play Zephyr's Mate. You can just like. I think it's it's about calculating the damage here because if you go for Onyxia and if he has the AoE, you lose a lot of potential damage, right? But okay. when you play Dragon Crusher, Zot, and Hero Power, you deal free damage this turn and you still have potential to deal. It, like, look at that. The, the Zot and the weapon actually t takes care of half of the spawns from Onyxia. Mm -hmm. But you take the immediate damage this turn and you still have Onyxia in hand and you play around Revenge. And, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it was a very close situation. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Onyxia was correct. It was very close anyway. Onyxia seeing the deal. 1-0 for JJ. Close match. I really liked it. Uh, you can't stress enough Fairy how, how yeah. important was this turn 3 when we said, like, yeah, we like both to save the Fairy Dragon because it, it seems like a weak minion, but the... Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 um... It seems like a like a small minion that is kind of insignificant, but uh, the the he the power of it yeah, being yeah. Uh, it's untargetable. It's against the class, yes, and you know exactly it, when you know he doesn't have the fire war axe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So very good decision from from JJ, and actually that I think that's single-handedly won him the game. Yeah, yeah. Next game will be Rogue versus Warrior. He picks the Rogue over the Hunter. I kind of like that. Like, I think that the role that uh, Hoi and Sixo are playing has a good shot against uh, the Warrior. That's at least what Chucky was saying, that uh, if you play both Van Cleef and the Questing Adventurer, then uh, you actually have a good chance against Dragon Warrior because they don't have an answer to your concealed boards. While if you play Hunter, if the Warrior has a Fire War Axe and or an Zophers Mate and or a Blood Wiker Slam, then you probably lose because they deal with their first threats, they develop, and then they just use the developed threats to, like... Uh, trade and uh, outvalue you. So yeah, I like this uh, rogue pick from Hoy. And uh, it's going to be a very close matchup, I think. Oh, Tomb Pillager keep. Interesting. Yeah, it's the best card in the yes, matchup. Yes, but the problem is that you're facing a really aggressive deck. So if you don't have answers to the early game minions, 
like an agent for, especially when you're on coin, if you miss an agent, if you miss backstabs, and you don't have answers to Alexstrasza and Fury Dragon, it might happen the same thing that just happened this game, the previous game. Yeah, but I still think you need to like get something to play. If you don't have anything to play, then you're in like an awkward spot no matter what. I mean, JJ has a really terrible hand, so good it's for not really terrible. Good it, for Hoy. He j he missed his one drop, his Finley, which would have made like a perfect uh, hand. And now if he if he draws a free drop, then he's in like a really good spot. Now he has a very bad hand. <laughs> but yeah. Fire Warson too is not bad. And if he would have hit like the Zophers mate, he couldn't play the fire anyway. So yeah, I don't mind this. And now Oh, maybe it's, it's a consideration for Hoy not to like coin the pillager, but nah, you you probably do do. Well you get the coin back, right, when it dies. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really matter. What you need to get is a conceal and then the question and adventure is a real threat. Yeah, yeah. One extra thing about uh, oh, that's really good draw because you wanted to play the blood Twiker anyways. I was mm -hmm. I was want I wanted to say that um, pillager is also like really great because if your opponent uses mana to like deal with your pillager, then he probably doesn't have anything to play since if he had anything to play, he would have already played on turn three. Mm -hmm. But uh, he drew something that fits in uh, free mana, yep. and actually a really good card because it also charges the face. It's oh. almost like a Corcoran, right? When you think about it, it's worth more than two mana right now. Yeah, obviously. It's, it's almost like a yeah. Corcoran. Like, yeah. you play Corcoran in your deck. And... <laughs> I agree. It's and this card is, like, just way insane, better. Insanely yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. If you have a dragon. Disclaimer. <laughs> don't sue me. <laughs> if you don't have a dragon. <laughs> Actually, now the curve is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Black and Corruptor into Black and Corruptor, if needed, of course, because it depends on the on the board state. But having two Blackwing Corruptors is just insane and powerful as well. Uh, so now it all depends what Hoi will do. And it's kind of easy to just say you want to play Azurig and Backstab because that ha that makes uh, gives you an answer to Alexstrasza's champion. Yeah, the play would have only changed if he would have drawn Preparation and probably if he would have Preparation and Fan mm -hmm. of Nice like cycle his hand further. Uh, by the way, about the Blackwings, the Corruptors, they're like really, really good if you can pair them with like a way to deal one damage in this matchup. Uh, with or you have a weapon. I mean, yeah, it's but a you overkill them a bit. It is an overkill, but you save uh, your minion in this case, and the minion might probably might uh, might add two attacks and not just one, which gives a better outcome than the uh, saving the weapon in this case, right? Yeah, of course you take the weapon. I'm just uh, saying that. Uh, in I this know spot you know you that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. <laughs> in in this spot, you like uh, would really oh, want to go first, mate. He actually trades. Yeah, he wants to save the weapon. Hmm, interesting. Well, so he. Keeps the weep a uh, weapon, 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 <laughs> weapon, <laughs> lethal weapon. Um, he keeps the weapon uh, against farseers, agents, basically, and that's about it. Yep. Maybe uh, against another five, five drop because you ha he has another black and corruptor. And uh, but still, having the two two minion next to him gives you an out of five damage against a against a minion that will be played by. Uh, by Hoi, and that deals with most minions in this deck anyway. Yeah, it was again a close call. It might be still okay because you didn't have another weapon in the hand. If you'd have another weapon in your hand, you'd have like extra incentive to trade with the current weapon. Mm -hmm. But as it stands, I think JJ has like again a lot of ways to apply pressure, and Hoi really needs to like find a way to deal with that pressure. During preparation, I still think you like keep it and play it next time with the Gadget Auctioneer to try to find something better. Um, yeah, you probably pass. And now JG again has to overkill the Azure Drake. That's the awkward thing. That's why I think in Zofri's mate is like the best card in this matchup because you have so many ways of dealing free damage or executing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but very few ways of dealing one damage. Similar situation to playing Hunter, right? Yeah. yeah. If you don't have Unleashed the Hounds, then you have really tough time to deal the one damage apart from the lucky. Um, juggles from Fiery Bat and the Toad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like uh, another two when you play Black on Corruptor. Smash phase for five, you deal with the with the other Drake. That's like the obvious choice. He's and thinking the other if thing he wants to execute. Corcron, Fairy Dragon. Yeah, so he the place earlier, yeah. You Corcron, you trade the Corcron, you play Fairy Dragon, mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. a bit too passive. You can Black Wing Corruptor execute, you can Black Wing Corruptor trade with your weapon, or you can play Azure Drake and trade with your weapon and execute. But you usually don't want to execute uh, this early in the game, even though chances say that when Hoi is going to play either Questing Adventure or Van Cleef, he's probably going to conceal them, so you cannot execute that turn anyways. Yeah. But it's still like one to use the execute in a more value situation, like let's say using the execute with the Blight Wiker or Ravaging Ghoul, or with a weapon from the Zorfer's Mate. 
Oh yeah, he hopes to go for like the most damage output while keeping his weapon. And I, yes, it's I like using execute. Uh, it's a huge tempo play, I like it as well. And the problem is if your opponent has like double eviscerates, that puts him on the map again. Yeah. Especially when paired with uh, with um, preparation. And it looks like he can take care of one of those if he wants to play Gadzdan Prep and Shadow Strike. What are the other options? The other option is Talnos, Fan of Knives, Deadly Poison. And uh, you deal mm -hmm. with one and with the half of the other. And uh, the pro of that is that uh, you get one more turn for Auctioneer. You can like grid it out and like next turn go for like Auctioneer, Prep, Spell, Conceal if you like get it. But uh, the, the, the downside strike. is that you can probably die. <laughs> That's a big downside. Or I you get say. closer to dying, at least. Mm, he goes. So yeah, he goes for the non-greedy play. He just plays the auctioneer and like tries to like see what he can do. I like the non-greedy play. I mean, <laughs> 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 when you think about it, it's still a greedy play, but because you develop the board and kill on one of the minions, uh, but at the same time, it gives you out more outs for the future turn. Yeah, yeah. Now it's a situation where actually questing adventures are a bit too slow. This is kind of interesting. Yeah, you're frothing Corcoran here. Even without the Corcoran, it will be still fine because you have Fairy Dragon. Yeah, but yeah. then Fairy Dragon can die to. Uh, without the frothing, Thanos. you said, right? Yeah. You said Corcoran. Uh, that, sorry, yeah, yes. <laughs> Corcoran and, and Fe uh, Fairy Dragon. But then it dies to Phalanx and Fan of Knives, and that's. Or if double Fan of Knives, there's like multiple options that can deal with those. So that's actually problematic. Oh, wow. Look at this. He has exact mana to kill it. You Talnos, you Deadly Poison the Frothing Berserker, you Fan of Knives, and then you South Sea Deckhand and clear the board. That's actually amazing. You go to 13, and I don't know, Rogue doesn't really have heal, so like GG can just uh, go full face, no space, and win the game. <laughs> Is he playing Gromash? Um, I don't think so, right? I think... I I'm not sure. People tend to cut Gromash now because you don't have that many activators recently after mm -hmm. cutting Slam. Mm -hmm. So like unless you play like a more wacky version that runs a Slam, or unless you play uh, Inner Rage, then you should uh, probably consider cutting Gromash. I'm not sure if he plays Grom or Rag, yeah. And that's a very important thing for this matchup. Yeah, the they same goes like for Ragnaros, right? Yeah, they can enhance your matchup by a lot. Especially against Rogue. You <laughs> Rogue does, just doesn't have any defense mechanism. Yeah. Read Taunt. So... Wait, why is he another line? Mm. Okay. What is he doing? Interesting. So, he doesn't want to kill both. He just leaves that guy alone. What? I don't like this, to be honest. Yeah, I, it's I don't a like lot it of either that much. It's a lot of resources being put into one card. And he didn't even co have conceal for it. Yeah. I'm not sure. And the other play also cycles. Not only cycles one of the Fan of Knights, which you don't wow. really want to have in your hand, but also like puts a Thanos on the board, and when Thanos dies, you get another card anyways. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's kind of under underestimated how powerful is the fact that you can play Creator on turn 8 and play Finley the same turn. Yeah, and not only you play Finley, but you get uh, the shitty one drop out of your deck mm -hmm. by drawing mm -hmm. it. It increases the chances to actually have a finisher in your hand. Yeah, it increases like the better top decks you can yeah. get later on in the game. Creator is really insane in, in most of the decks that are being played with, and especially like the aggressive ones. Yeah, he gi it gives some more depth to the Dragon Warrior, like some more consistency. It's not only like a YOLO deck anymore, it's just like a consistent good deck that curves out and then... Uh, Plays kind of like the mid-range druid from the old times. Mm, it's less explosive, I would say. Less explosive because you don't have Force of Nature servers, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can play Gromash and maybe take in an Inner Rage or something like that if you want to be extra wacky. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> one Inner Rage, one Grom. <laughs> Number, if, you would, if, it if it would be possible to play two Groms, would you play two Groms? I don't think so, right? Just too slow. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, this is... <laughs> Both of those two targets are really bad to sap, <laughs> so you don't I want mean, to use you, that. You, would, you could sap Finley, but you don't get that much value from it. Like, he already has the best hero power, he's never going to replay Finley most of the time. It, it depends if it's the best hero power uh, if he's playing Grom. Otherwise, I would still value the um, Hunter hero power more. Really? Yeah. I really like the Mage one, because it uh, gives you that one extra reach damage that we talked about earlier on. Mm-hmm. But at the same but time, it's already too late, right? Uh, he already yeah, played all the minions. In this situation, right? Yeah. You yeah. Just d it's a finisher on its own. Yeah, yeah. In this exact spot, it's probably yeah. He already killed Pillager and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even like first and half. What do you do with first and half when the hero power actually <laughs> kind of cuts you in half every single turn? 
So this is way too late. Uh, you can still go for Questing Adventure, Conceal, Sap, Edwin. Hmm. And get free damage in the process. Three, six, eight, nine. I don't think there's any way to set up little. JJ has like the same game plan that he had in game one. Just mm -hmm. play play an, a number of threats that is not over not over committing, and then just letting your opponent deal with it. And in the turn where they cannot deal with it, you just overwhelm them. Over committing against rogue is actually that not that big of a deal. I mean, fan of knives and like uh, yeah, but spell power. That that's actually what happened this uh, this game because he had two fan of knives and a foul nose, which yeah, is yeah. the maximum damage output. But usually that's that doesn't happen. So over committing against the rogue is not really that powerful. Yeah, yeah, that it's that not that punishing as against yeah, warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I agree with that. Wow, he goes for the shadow strike and Edwin just like that. Yeah, I like this a bit more maybe. Like, if your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with one of your minions, you can like uh, conceal it for the next turn and try to like set up a free turn little kind of. But seeing JJ's hand, six damage in the on the board, putting your opponent on seven. Here power to six. Hmm. You can play just pure dragon ping. Yeah, you trade with a Do you taunted trade? minion, right? Yeah, you, you can just trade weapon and ping. I will trade a free six and ping. But then because if you if you trade a weapon, then you leave on cliff have a but clean trade. But there's the poison. Oh yeah, never mind. Okay, yeah, sorry. Huh? He still goes for it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even with deadly poison. I don't mind this. I think it's like. You don't want to give the Edwin a clean trade. It's not. It doesn't feel right, you know. Some okay. things just don't feel right. Wait, can Hoy actually win this? I mean, it's it's looking okay with the draw. With the the, yeah, with the auctioneer auctioneer. maybe saves. Ooh, oh my goodness! What is that? That is ten twenty damage. That is actually twenty damage. <sighs> and I think you need to go for it this turn. Yeah, of course. You don't have any other option. Yes, you might die, but. But then you win if you don't die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good call, I would say. If you don't die next turn, you win. That's pretty good. Um, so we'll be at 10. You will get. You have guaranteed 6 damage to your face. Bonds. Nah. Not useful here. But maybe in other situations you'd have been pretty good. He's thinking about trading with Edwin, but then you don't set up little. Yeah. Trading with Edwin doesn't even, uh, sorry, going face with Edwin doesn't, doesn't set up it little on its own, but it gives you better odds of setting up little. I mean, when you have a concealed gadget hand, it's most likely lethal. Unless you don't draw a spell in the next two cards, never mind. I mean, he probably he was also considering playing the board game, but I don't think you're going to win a board game against Dragon Warrior that has so many cards in the hand. That's one damage of lethal, but he has a pink. Yeah. JJ manages to pick it up. Wow. That was pretty close. That was pretty close, but I really oh, like... Look at JJ! <laughs> 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 Too much Red Bull, man. Stop drinking that. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of serious here because it's like 35 degrees <laughs> and he's drinking a, a can of sugar, basically. That's not good. <laughs> For your health. Oh, man. I, know, I don't think it's only that. Like, JJ, I talked with him today and, like, he disclosed to me that... Uh, he had six cups of coffee today. Six cups. Did he drink those? Yeah, he drank them all. Oh, S okay. He drank six cups. <laughs> <laughs> he, m he mad. Yeah, JJ. He doesn't like look like after six coffees, man. Yeah, he's like a lot of Hearthstone. So now we have Rogue. Uh, Rogue. No. We have Rogue has been killed. So now we have Warrior versus Hunter. And it seems like JJ is just having the killer openers. I mean, b basically because you have three war axe, but uh, it matters a lot in those matchups. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the best way to beat Hunter. As I said earlier, if you find the fire war axe, you can deal with their first two threats while developing your two threats, or one threat at least, mm -hmm. because you use one of the turns to play fire war axe. And then that gives you like, enough tempo to like uh, trade with the threats that you're playing, like their next threats, and then just like snowball the board. And like the way Hunter wins this matchup is they try to like stay in the game until turn eight and then play Call of the Wild because the Warrior doesn't really have an answer for Call of the Wild. So like it's gonna be a good one. He needs another dragon though. Yeah, here you coin the fairy. You're like, come get me. Play your minion. Yeah. That tells the opponent I either have a Alexrosis champion or the weapon. So most of the time it tells you that it has the weapon. Because like with Isasa Champion, yeah, it would probably still coin it out. 
Only if you had the free drop to follow up, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The weapon is like again insane. And there's the second dragon, which is crucial because now we have a really good curve. Yes. So it, depend it depends on the situation, of course, on the board, but it, it's either first monkey or friendly berserk on turn three. And then you have the Twilight Guardian, which is just horrible to deal with wi with the hunter. Hoy is like, okay, that's enough. That's enough fairy dragons yeah. for today. <laughs> it's like 24 damage now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, GG picking up the dra oh second dragon. That's pretty good. He could mm -hmm. have also like picked mm -hmm. up any like one drop, and then he'd be able to go like three mana card, and then play another three mana card plus the one drop, and uh, also put himself in a good spot. And now this will help a lot, actually, because yeah. this is the the thing that we talked about uh, earlier before that uh, both hunter and warrior are missing the one damage, and that will help a lot with. Uh, just dealing with the four HP minions, so like quick shot with Ninja the Hounds will help dealing with uh, other Drakes, with Frothing Berserkers, mm -hmm. uh, even with the Monkey. So, good, but not really useful right now. Yeah, you probably just develop the Infested Wolf. Do you think so? If you get, uh, let's say, you go for an Animal Companion, or you go even first for Tracking, If can you get anything better than Animal Companion from the Tracking that will deal with immediately with the Frothing Berserker? I don't think so. Not really, so yeah. You can plan to use the tracking to get a five drop to curve out better. So let's say you can get um, for a t a Stranglehold Tiger for turn five with the tracking. Animal Companion has a 66% of, let's say, success because you will have either Misha who kind of contests the Frothing Berserker if it doesn't get killed by uh, anything from the hand. From the hand. Uh, Huffer just immediately trades. Yeah, Infested Wolf is worse to like the board. It's bad versus Fire War Axe. But it's, it's I still like Infested Wolf because it's like a mediocre card overall. It's like the last card in the Hunter. If Hunter had better options, they would not play Infested Wolf. So like playing it on its turn, on turn 4, lets you have better turns later on. Because if you don't play Infested Wolf now, you'll still be stuck with it in the hand. And maybe you'll... I agree about that. Like this is why turn. I dislike the card in general. Yeah, but yeah. when you think about it, if your opponent has the Ghoul, how much damage is that floating berserker right now? Yeah, but uh, what if you play Animal Companion and you get Misha or Leoc and your opponent has the Ghoul? It's even worse. So, like, mm. uh, with Companion, you'd only want Huffer, and that's a 33% chance. It's not gonna, like, always happen. Okay, so what is looking for? Deadly Shot? Oh! Uh, okay. That's not that great because you lose one of the Deadly Shots. I mean, you lose the Hunt Master. That, actually <laughs> that is actually more painful. Yeah, like, one of the ways you beat the way is after, like, stabilizing. You, like, uh, play Hound Savannah Master. Hunt Master. Yeah. How do you deal with that if you, if um, one execute was already like played? Yeah, but he doesn't have Savannah, he doesn't have the board, and he doesn't have Master as it stands. Yeah, and he will only have one of those left in the deck. That's unlucky. Is it? Yeah, kind of. I mean, he would have board control right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but he would take some more damage. Yeah, but that still would be fine. I would yeah. always, in this situation, always take the board control over the less damage. Yeah. But you don't have a choice anyways. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that shot would be actually just three mana kill a minion. It's kinda it would be good. too good. I mean <laughs> Rogue <laughs> has it for five mana. Yeah. Oh aggressive push. What do you think about that? Aggressive push instead of fierce monk and uh a fair dragon to play around unleash the hounds. Mm, does you want to does that play around unleash the hounds? It's kinda play probably around. yes, yeah. One other thing that it does is it allows you to play double Fierce Monkey on turn 6 and just like keep your Fairy Dragon. But do you want to keep your Fairy Dragon for that much time? You have Onyxia, so that's the thing. You don't need the Fairy Dragon for activators anymore. Because Onyxia will be doing that for the next 4 turns. Yeah, but you need to get the Onyxia. Unlike Druid, you don't have Wargoth or Innervate with this deck. That's like one of the downsides mm -hmm. of Warrior. <laughs> I mean, you probably wouldn't play it anyway. May maybe Innervate. You wouldn't play Wildgrowth in or Innovate in Warrior. In this kind of Warrior? No, I would not play Wildgrowth. Instead of what? I mean, okay, let's stop talking about this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, we're doing like too, too much mental gymnastics. <laughs> so uh, Kill Command can kill most of the Twilight Guardian, and then you have a good trade. And with you can Argent use, Squire. Yeah, yeah, and then you can use the Leok to trade. Uh, sorry, the Huffer to trade, because you don't want to. Now you just take it in low, the face. Right? Oh, okay. No, you want Hopper to stay. You want Hopper. Because, like, okay, let's say you trade with Hopper now. Mm -hmm. And then your opponent plays the minion. You still have to, like, kill that minion with your face, probably. So, like, now you push for damage, and the next thing you can deal with the next another minion. Like, that's, like, a very big misconception that some people have sometimes. Like, they prefer to, like, take the good trade now that is bad in the long run, rather than trading the bad one now that is better in the long run. Okay. I like having the Hopper on board. Double Monkey? It's not that great. 
Definitely and not great, but I don't think you have an option here. If you play Alex versus Champion, you play one monkey, and you can kill one of the one ones or the the uh, huffer. The huffer. But that's mm, yeah, it's probably. I mean, it's I not actually, it's not bad. But because then the fierce monkey is really h tough to kill. But you need to develop the board as soon as possible after that to play around um, Call of the Wild. Hmm. Not sure about this. You play to monkeys because you want to pay homage to Harambe. Wow. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Too many memes? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, don't I become a Chucky, man. <laughs> What's wrong with Chucky? Well, you know, uh, apart from belittling the game he's playing professionally, nothing. <laughs> well, uh, I think Hoi is one bomb away of winning the game. Like, he has Call of the Wild for the next turn, and if in the next two draws he picks up, like, something very big, he wins. I don't think JJ Sonixia is, like, good enough. So, like, let's see what JJ picks up. Wait, disconnect? No. Let's hope not. Um, probably a spectator bug, right? I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm hoping for a spectator bug, too. Huh? Has to be. Oh, oh no, no, he's thinking about it. Okay, so he's just just like dragging it out, you know. Okay, okay, never mind. Almost got us. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Hoy. Hmm. What is he thinking about? Not trading with this? I mean, you need to kill it, right? No, you, cool, can, you can. You cannot trade and then call off the wild for more value next turn. Uh, but cool. He didn't have it earlier. He would have played it last turn. That's pretty smart. It's a ballsy play, and I think it's good. I, I think at this point you need to take some risks. You're zero two. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you have to lose? You have to like make the ballsy plays in order to like uh, give yourself better outs. Okay, yeah? I'll give you that. I mm. actually like it. So four, seven, ten. How much damage is actually that? Four, uh, ten damage to the face. If he works for the win next turn, or Alex Rosa's champion. I mean, we didn't see Call of the Wild. It has stunned. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> Would you not go for the for the win next turn anyway? Uh, being JJ, I think that he should follow the aggressive game plan that he started on, like with the Corcoran, instead mm -hmm. of like uh, playing the monkey f and the fairy dragon. It's a tough choice. I mean, if you killing a one-one instead of dealing three damage to the face, doesn't really change that much. Yeah. What now? Hmm. Now Call of Duty is gonna be bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Okay. Mm -hmm. He goes face. Smork. JJ follows. Oh, his no, man. he's trading with the bad. Ah. That's actually okay because it soaks with the Call of the Wild, it actually soaks one more damage. Yeah. Okay. Did you trade? Yeah, you probably killed the board. Yeah, I so think you killed you the board. At least you kill the Corcron. Come on, kill the Corcron. If you kill the Corcron and you leave uh, Huffer and your Spider on board, you deal 7 damage to your opponent's face. He will be at 10. You have lethal next turn on board. Your opponent has a 3 3 that doesn't trade with the Misha. So he needs to top deck a ghoul to kill the Misha, kill the 1 1s, leave the Huffer on 1 HP. That leaves 7 damage on board. It's 9 damage with hero power, so it's not lethal. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I still like killing the yeah killing the Corcoran is probably like the best play, and not killing the uh, Alex as a champion. But if you don't kill Corcoran, that's madness. You have to kill it. You just die to free damage if you don't. Mm -hmm. And okay. you kill it with the one wants to play around the top of the goal. Right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Unless there's something that I miss, another possibility that he. No, it's have. it's more damage and it plays yeah. around the goals. Uh, of course. Yeah, this hits face. Yep. Very good. Very nice from Hoy. Um, Finley. I don't think it helps. Anything? Uh, four, seven, nine. No, there's nothing. As I said, no. this matchup, the way Hunter wins it, Call of the Wild is like too much pressure. Where he cannot deal with it, they don't have rolling. But well, actually, he can heal twice. I mean, he can heal and then kill the Misha. Oh, wow. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so he needed. Yeah, he needed Fire Blast. Um, or. Fire Blast or something else would change Yeah, something? no, I don't think so. I don't think he will be able to win from that spot. And that's why you don't want to top deck Finley late game. That's why you want, that's why you play the Curator to like eliminate possibilities like this in like most yeah. of your games where you have the Curator, for example. 
Um, GG, I still think, has the Zulok, and the Zulok is really good against the Hunter. But other than the Zulok, I think JJ has Rogue. And Rogue is not that good against the Hunter, is it? Um, it's in Z N Zod version, so definitely not. So he goes for the good matchup, he just wants to like uh, finish this fast. But the downside of like going for the good matchup first is that if you lose it, it might be tilted in the last uh, decisive game of the series. I think I never seen JJ tilting. Like, in a tournament game, or at least he didn't show it. Yeah, tilting, I mean... I mean, like like you, you saw how you saw the relief after the second game that he won. He wants his series to be like uh, faster because it's getting like late. Uh, maybe it was because of the coffee. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> or the Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. Standing next to him. Yeah, but when I say like a player is like tilted or something, he's probably gonna like maybe make like one mis one small mistake that can cost him like one percent and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He's not really that big. Like he just don't a rope and forget to attack. Yeah, that's We're probably bigger. We bigger actually than have percent. seen <laughs> like three situations of roping this this tournament which affected the outcome of the game. Yeah, yeah. Or changed it completely from winning to losing. Th but it, it depends. Like, it's super hard to, like, uh, value it. Like, if you rope more times, you probably play better overall, but are those percentages worth it if you, like, just once out of 100 games, like, lose a game because of it? But, of course, if you, like, train yourself to, like, be really good on the rope and in, like, these pressure situations, maybe it's better to, like, start roping. But, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. every player has his own flow. Interesting to see the mulligan phase from Howie. He kept the fair bet and <laughs> we're gonna wait everything else. So, let's see what will happen here. Nev Juggler most likely to p protect the 1-1 one -one and then trade. Mm, I think it is very close between the Juggler and the Poses Villager. <laughs> It's very, very close. Hmm. Because you can play Poses Villager, play a bit of curve, and then play Imyang Boss on free, and then just play the Juggler on four and cash in on like the second Poses Villager, cash in on the Imyang Boss, and maybe play something else from your hand. While with this play, you leave your Juggler exposed to possible threats, but you play more efficiently mono wise. To be honest, I like the Knife Juggler more, because it, uh, your opponent has to use coin oh to deal with it, unless he has a quick shot. That's the only out on turn two uh, to deal with the Knife Juggler. So that's that kind of disrupts his flow, uh, most likely, and that's actually the case. Look at that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two four drops, and you would like to play a four drop on next turn. So this turn, huge toad, and just I if that will be any other minion than knife juggler, you just play the huge toad here, and develop a four drop uh, on turn four. Huge which would toad be is super risky here. Oh, it is. I'm not. I'm saying yeah, I would yeah. play it, but I would consider playing the art and horse rider just to kill the knife juggler because it's uh, such a huge threat. Yeah. Yeah. But if you play the horse rider, you put yourself in a spot where you cannot really win. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now another interesting decision. If you play in Young Boss, you only have access to one knife. And uh, you play on curve. If you play the other two guys, you have access to two knives, so it's way more likely to kill the guy. But you have this situation, and that's perfect. Yeah, it's like the best one. <laughs> that's like, that is like the dream scenario, what had just happened. Yeah, yeah. It, it the having having the one one on board actually gives you such huge advantage on board because uh, every free drop that can be played with the one with the knife juggler is actually like cards like abuse sergeant give you access to four damage an example with the juggle uh, so y you can kill basically mm -hmm. everything that that will be played by the hunter and the only downside of it is uh, being more exposed to, to more exposed to unleashed hounds but unleashed hounds in this situation just deals with the knife juggler and the one one and nothing else. Another downside that I see, a potential one, is like uh, 3 HP is worse than 4 against Hunter because, as we said, Hunters have like a lot of mm -hmm. ways to do 3 damage through Kill Command, through Eagle Home Bow, through Quick Shot. Yeah, but then. But your still, yeah, it's like way better to have like the but one then one and stuff. If he kills the. Uh, he uses the Quick Shot, he's off curve. If he uses a bow, okay, that, deal, that uh, buys some tempo for turn, uh, for turn 4, but at the same time, it deals 2 damage from the Imp Gang boss, deals 1 damage from the juggle that will be spawned from the Imp Gang boss, and then you take next turn at least 4 damage. Yeah, that is right. stacking up so Don't fast. Yeah. yeah, now Hoy is playing from behind, as you said. Oh, that is actually not good. You just trade the 1-1, one, one, right? You Do don't want to like extend one one? The into one leash. You're already extending. Yeah, yeah, but you don't need to extend more. <laughs> for just milking the value. Like that's what you do. That's what trading the Indian boss is. Like you try to like overly milk the value, overly milk the cow for the value. Oh man, it yeah. doesn't look good for Hoy. Yeah. Like the infested wolf is just <laughs> such a bad creature. <laughs> it's like, look at this, <laughs> a four drop, 
that doesn't do anything. Dives to your dies opponent's to one drop. Dives to almost everything. And does he even want to kill it? Yeah. It's like, let's just ignore that. No, he doesn't kill it. Yeah. Well, we had the discussion like when it was released, right? When we were yeah, testing yeah. it out and it was like, completely horrible 4-drop. There's no reason to play it. I mean, there is. It's a beast. It gives you Hammaster synergy. Yeah, but... But it's not good enough most of the time, yeah. yeah. Like, if Hunter would have better cards, they wouldn't play this. I mean, now they got Barnes, which synergizes with this card and makes it, like, a bit better, but, like, how many times are you gonna, like, hit the Infested Wolf of the Barnes? It's not that often. And even then, you get, like, an extra Hunted Creeper, almost. I would consider playing another removal uh, if you have a spot f uh, for a removal instead of the inf Infested Wolf. A second or Unleash, or...? Or, yeah, second Unleash. So especially in this metagame. I mean, it depends what you want to target with your deck. Maybe Hoi wasn't, like, aiming for uh, Zoo, mm -hmm. especially. Mm, might be the case. I'm not saying it's a bad deck choice from him, I'm just ran I have a rant uh, on this card. <laughs> <laughs> Your personal grudge. I like trading the Flame Imp. If you trade the Ingang boss, you give him like an extra one, or if you trade the Flame Imp, you force him to trade with the Ingang boss. Ooh. That's game. Well, yeah, and JJ takes the series. Yep. It's Mork. Soulfire. He looks so relieved. He looks so relieved. Well, he wants to uh, go to sleep, right? That's what we talked to him before the game. He was like, oh yeah, let's win this fast and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Now GG is in the winner bracket final. What that means is that if he wins the next series, he'll go into the grand final with a one series advantage, which is like so big. Yeah, especially in the best of five in this format. Because first of all, uh, the better, um, let's say not the better player, but the player that is more prepared has already an advantage. So uh, in the case if JJ would be better prepared, not only has an advantage in deck building and the pick and ban process, but also he has a second chance to just win the entire match just by, you know, well, by changing strategy, okay. for example, because uh, like when you're, when, <laughs> when, you're, when you're back, basically, right? So like normally, let's say you, ha you are in the grand final and in the grand final, you have your free decks, you have your standard ban, uh, you, you play one match and then the second match, most of the time it's really similar when you lose because you, don't, you, you can't influence that much. But if you lose the grand final, you can absolutely change your lineup just having different picks and bans. So have a totally different second match to have a chance to win after all. After all. We'll see if that will be the case. Uh, I actually hope that the winner from the bracket of the winners will win because it's just, you know, so it's a good atmosphere to have. I, I wanted to go to like the third one. I wanted to be 1-1 one, one and then like a decider. Ah, okay. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so we are going to see the best place of the match overall, JJ versus Hoy. Uh, that was a pretty nice Onyxia. Yeah, I no really like, like, there. JJ played a lot into Brawl, and then, like, Hori was forced to Brawl, and then, like, he just played Onyxia afterwards. Like, super good play from JJ there. And yeah. I don't... Uh, yeah, oh this no. is the turn when we actually... No, no, it's not, it's not that turn. It's not oh. that turn. No, that's not the turn. It's, it's just a no. good turn with Edwin. He Edward. had Talos Fan of Nice in that turn. Oh, okay. Alright, so just going for the most important place in that, in that situation here. Just getting that uh, Charger to finish off the game. Um, Edwin and Gadget and Gadget's action here hidden was a lot of damage, but not enough to stop JJ. J <laughs> <laughs> Did you even see yourself then? <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I've played it fine, but I should have maybe played a Drake over the Crusher the one turn. Yeah, but the rest. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's finish up watching, and we'll talk with you after that. So yeah. quiet now. Oh, here it was so bad because I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't hit the free damage to the face to have the Corruptor out. I was so mad at myself. Yeah, well, you know, stuff happens. But you win one free one. Oh. Actually, I just talked that I should ignore you now. Because we didn't introduce you now after the game. Yet. Yes, we, you might be actually talking to yourself, Walter. I'm not sure if JJ is, is muted or not. Yeah, that might be weird. But it's uh, it's It's late. still fine. Yeah, it's late. <laughs> and I can now uh, welcome JJ to the couch. The hey, winner. Hey, hey, hey. JJ, welcome. So how does it feel to smirk again? Hot. It's hot, you know. Okay. No, it's it's actually. I mean, what I what smoke again? Like, <laughs> am I? Am, is that my image now, really? <laughs> yes. yes yeah. You are the hunter guy. Well, mm. you play dragon warrior here, but you're still the hunter guy. Mm, I mean, if you don't ban dragon warrior, it's the same principle as the druid, right? Yeah. Then why do <laughs> people ban? <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah, it's yeah. True, it's that true. was your trap, right? Like you were hyping up Druid so so hard. Exactly. And then they banned Druid, and you're and like, "Ha ha! I have Dragon Warrior to win the series." Yeah. Uh, well, right. it's a good call. Good call from you that you banned the Druid from Hoi, because now he didn't manage to like. I banned everyone. I banned everyone's Druid. So. Yeah, he banned everyone's Druid. He bans Druid yeah. and first picks Druid. So fast. Um, how do you feel about picks and bans? Did you think you have an edge, or was it equal? Did you win the mind games there? 
Um, that was against Hoyt was the first time I felt like I have somebody who is like on my level on the picks and bands. The other players were like, yeah, they Shots fired. Allur luring them into the trap of having the wrong classes. And they left my druid open. I think I didn't drop a single game of it. So very happy about that. I like the banning system. Adds more strategy to the game. I think that's yeah. what Hearthstone needs. That makes me really happy. I'm really happy about my um, yeah pick and band so far. And the first match, Warrior versus Warrior, uh, were you afraid about that uh, the one? Because normally the Nizov should have an advantage versus Dragon Warrior. But do you, did you agree with that at all? Or do you think like Dragon Warrior actually has a good uh, good situation there? I mean, it's a control deck and I actually out-controlled it. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy, right? I mean, the, 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 the Dragon Warrior has a lot of steam. I was, I was thinking that as well. When I started playing this match, I was like... You should have an edge. <laughs> like you with the curator as well, it's like uh, ancient uh, of lore on super tree steroids. Like it's so it's so hard. Did you count how much damage the fairy dragon dealt? Uh, <laughs> that was hey, so sick. good, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, eight, eight. Fifteen damage. It took a ravaging ghoul, and it also took a gorehal hit. Actually, eighteen right? damage uh, because it was fifteen damage from attacks, and then gorehal had to attack into it. Eight, the fa uh, what is he doing? If he has no Vorex, he's done. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. So we talked funny. about it like for a few minutes because yeah. it was a really good decision to play the axe over the Frothing Berserker on yeah. turn yeah. turn three, and that won you that game single-handedly. No, Very I good. also think the Savannah's trade was kind of tricky. I feel like oh yeah, that turn was tricky as well. we, we Lothar wanted to go face. Yeah, I was, I, wanted like okay to go face. I was okay with killing Sylvanas because if you don't kill it, you give the initiative by giving him the brawl and like all the value inherently. Exactly. I agree with Ardu here. Yeah, well, obviously, because you <laughs> made that call. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, all right. That was that was a good match. And uh, we have one more match for you guys today. This is going to be Stan Sivka versus Tessin coming up next. Give us some time. We'll prepare the players and we will be back after the break.